welcome back to Sunil Teaches. Thanks to Ponda the Light and Jaffa Cat for asking these questions that we are going to be covering today. I'm going to show you how to tween an object and make it move across the screen. I'm also going to show you how to make an object transparent without using the opacity uh, layers in by just clicking on the drawings. And I'm also going to show you how to move the camera around. And there will be timestamps below in the description to jump to all of those different lessons if you want to just skip to those. So let's get started, make this really quick. So first, I'm just going to draw a quick circle. I'm going to fill it in red. And let's just say that's my circle. This object is now on this drawing layer and I'm going to make it last the whole time so it is on throughout the whole timeline. Now starting with frame 1 I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click this transform box. Now you'll notice this pink box has come up around the stuff in this layer. If I had stuff in a different layer it wouldn't select that so that's good to know. So you can move this a little bit, and now that I've moved it, there is a dot right here on my timeline. This represents a keyframe. So at frame 1, the box should always be here. Now I can go to frame 20 and move the box over here. Maybe frame 30. I want the box to get really big. And at frame 60, I want the box to go over here and go small again. As a side note, you can also hold shift while um, clicking on the diagonal to scale it proportionally so it'll scale correctly. Or if you just want it to change shape, you can use without shift. But holding shift will keep its proportion. And now if I hit play, you'll notice that the object did exactly as I told it to and it tweened in between all of these frames with these as my set keyframes. Um, you can also move these keyframes around if you don't like the timing of how it moved across the screen. So maybe I want this to happen much faster, so I'll move those keyframes closer together. Maybe even closer just to accentuate that. And hit play. And that's how tweening works. Um, you'll notice before I hit play, I almost always come up here and hit save, just as a side note, because uh, Toon Boom has a tendency to crash, especially when you're asking it to play your video. So I always save right before I try and play an animation, just to be safe. Now, let's make this circle transparent. So, one way that you can make something transparent is double click on your drawing or you can right click and hit layer properties go into the drawing tab and here you'll see opacity opacity is something you're probably used to seeing in Photoshop but it's how you can see through an image now we actually you can use this but most of the time, this is not the way that you will want to make something transparent in your animations because, let's say I noticed that there was, you know, something else that needed to be added to the circle. You know, maybe I missed a spot over here or something. Now, you'll see that the color has doubled over, and if I would color it over multiple times, you know, that looks pretty ugly and that's not what you want out of your transparency so let's undo all of that and make it nice and clear again and what we're going to do is we're going to pull this off to one side and we are going to open up our network this network can be used to 
uh, add a whole bunch of different effects to your animations. But right now, I'm just going to show you the transparencies. Over here, I have the module library pulled up. If you don't have this on the side, you can either uh, click here, click on this arrow pointing down, and you should be able to find it, module library. Or you can go up to your windows and also click on module library. And then it will bring up another uh, window similar to the network here. So going into the module library, filter. And I want a transparency filter. I'm just going to click and drag it right in here. Now the drawing layer is what I have my circle on. So I'm going to drag this transparency here. I'm going to disconnect the drawing from the composite. The composite is what shows up on your camera. So now the layer doesn't show up here in the scene at all. It's not even down here in the layers. What I want to do is I want to take the drawing and connect it to the top of the transparency box. And the bottom of the transparency box, I want to connect back down to the composite. And now you see my circle is back in the scene I can exit out of here and double click on the transparency and I can make it bigger or I can make it smaller depending on how much you want the object to be transparent and it still has the animation on it just fine. So that's how you do those two things. And now for the last thing I'm going to show you is how to set up a camera. So. We've got our color card, we've got our drawing layer, we've got our transparency on our object. Now we're going to click this plus button and go to camera. And now we've added a camera into the scene. So I usually keep the camera down here at the bottom just so that I always know where it's at. And you'll see that I've got a pink box around my camera now. Now what you need to do is you need to add a peg to your camera. Now this should say camera P and there'll be a little connection down here to your camera. You'll see it's kind of similar to how the drawing layer takes the transparency as a peg that's an add-on to the drawing layer. So this peg has an add-on of the camera. So what this means I can do is if I go back to frame one, I can go up here. If you don't have these buttons up here at the top of your toolbar, you can right click. And it is the advanced animation buttons. So if I uncheck that, they disappear. If I check it, they reappear. So you have translate, which means you can move the camera right or left. And now, just like how I did with the when I was tweening, I now have a peg here, a keyframe, that tells me that my camera needs to be at that spot at that moment. And if I move it over here, I can tell the camera to move down, maybe put the ball back in the center of the camera, and you can do different things too. You can rotate the camera, scale it, skew it, maintain size, or spline offset. Um, I mostly use these three to scale, rotate, and translate, which is what, for most cases, you'll probably be using too. So now, when my camera is moving, and because the ball is moving around, it makes it kind of hard to see, so I am just going to delete these tweens so that the ball stays in one spot. And now you'll see, instead of the ball moving, it's my camera that's moving. Maybe here I want the camera to... Whoop. Nope. Here I want the camera to turn sideways. And it's, it's hard to notice it a whole lot with... Whoop. Not that. I want the camera to move. Yeah, so let's say the camera rotates like this. You know, because there's just the ball here on the screen, it might be hard to notice 
how my camera is moving. But it is, and you can always go back and look at your pegs. Um, Toon Boom also has a curve editor you can play around with, and I encourage you playing around with that to move how fast or slow you want your camera to move from one place to another. But there's the basics on how you use these tools, and don't be afraid to leave questions for Toon Boom Harmony, Paint Tool Psy, um, animation tips, whatever you want. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.